Uh, Coach Richardson, good to see you again. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, 2021 signing day, uh, not a lot of positions. You had a, a pretty central focus here in, in this signing class. Uh, just talk about uh, the kinds of kids you were targeting, the, the positions you were targeting, and, and your overall comments on the signing class as a whole. Yeah, so good to see you again, Todd. Thanks for having me on. And I think we did what we set out to accomplish to do in this signing class. Going into this, we didn't really know what it was going to look like. It's a very fluid situation. We have a chance to get all of our seniors back and not sure really how many scholarships are going to kind of come available for guys. And so what we did was we looked at it and said, uh, this is an opportunity for us to focus on some positions that are typically kind of more difficult to get. And uh, we looked at the O-line, we looked at the D-tackle position and said, we need to kind of beef up in those two areas and so um, great thing about this is some of those kids still have a senior year left to play so we get to you know still monitor and track them and go out and see them play but I think it gives them an opportunity to know where they're going to go and be settled in on uh, where they're going to go and uh, have their college career starting in the fall before they even go out and play their senior year. So it gives them a chance to feel good about that and uh, I really feel good about the seven guys that we have here today. Well, we usually get a chance to sort of bounce around to a number of positions, but I just want to give you a chance to uh, uh, maybe talk about uh, the kids. Uh, let's start with the defensive linemen. Yeah. Because uh, you've got six offensive linemen and one defensive lineman. Let's talk about the defensive lineman, uh, Hughes, and how he'll, he'll, he'll come in and help you guys. Yeah, Jordan is a, he's a big body. He's, uh, he's a great kid, has a great support structure at home. Um, he has pedigree in his family where he's got some siblings that have uh, played in college sports also. Uh, they're the basketball players. He's the football player. I kind of tease him about uh, not being the best basketball player in his family. He likes basketball a lot, but uh, he's a very good natural football player, and he's going to really uh, help us out at D-tackle. D-tackles, uh, those guys, they, they set the tone for the defense. They're the guys that are most important. They're closest to the ball, and he, he fits the mold of what we're looking for there, and so we're really excited to get him. Now, let's talk about your offensive linemen. Good size in all of them. They're going to take up a lot of space. Uh, you got a, a 300 pounder uh, and some some pretty beefy guys along the line as well. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, your needs at that position and, and how these guys will come in and help. Them. Yeah, I, I think it's it's kind of a couple areas to address in that way where. Um, it feels like we, we kind of are always looking for more and more bigger guys. You know I mean? Just the nature of the beast, there's not enough good big guys out there to play college football. So if we can get our hands on them, we're going to definitely take a hard look at them. And we targeted all six of these guys uh, in what we call our green area, and they are the top-rated guys on our board. And um, we were fortunate enough to be able to have a chance to go after all six of them. Uh, but also, uh, when you're looking at this um, – we do have a need for O-line. Uh, it, it feels like just the nature of college football, those guys are taking the most hits. They're, they're involved in the most contact. They are uh, very prone to, you know, the attrition of the position. And so you need to stay stocked up on those bodies. And uh, when we had these guys on campus, uh, got a great in-person uh, look at them in terms of just getting to know them and then being able to work them out and being able to see him move. And uh, it was really exciting for us to be able to match that up with what their film looked like and what uh, all of their uh, coaches had said about them. Couldn't be more thrilled about these six old linemen. They're really going to help us in the future. Let's talk about, you haven't really seen last year's uh, the signing class play yet. Or yeah. how beneficial is it? I mean, that you're getting to talk about the, the oddities of, of this past year. How much does it help you that not only the guys, the redshirt freshmen, that were going to be redshirt freshmen in, in 20, that they now get another session of practice to help them prepare yeah. for now what's become the 20 spring season? Yeah, no, it's unbelievable. It's uh, If you think about it, uh, guys are getting free game reps this spring because we are actually playing a season and it's not necessarily going against their eligibility. And uh, what, it, what it does is it gets them in the program. You know, you learn how to be a college student. You get to develop. You get to lift. You get to go through practices and understand what all that looks like. 
And yet these guys that are in the program right now still could be redshirted in the fall of of 21 here coming up. And so uh, it's so unique. And uh, what we talk about is the class from a year ago that you're referring to, they could still be redshirt freshmen in the fall of 2022, if that makes sense, right? And so uh, we're, we're really looking at that in terms of how we recruited this class for 21. And so... Um, it all, it's, it's a little bit of a numbers game and you got to kind of really be strategic in how you do it, but there certainly is no science to it. I mean, you, there's a lot of moving and shaking parts that are going on and it's fluid and, you know, we're going to actually continue to recruit here throughout this signing period. And, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we still get a few more numbers to add to these seven. How different was it on the recruiting trail this year? Obviously you say it's, it's not only you being really selective with, with what kids you're bringing in, but with the, the other D1 schools are being selective as well about who they're bringing in. So what what differences did you see on the recruiting trail this year, both in a positive and a negative way? Yeah, I think um, maybe the positive of this was <laughs> we didn't have to put as many miles on our cars. <laughs> um, it, it was efficient in terms of time in terms of, uh, you know, when we would go out, we'd do a lot of home visiting. Uh, sometimes you're, you're limited to how many people you can get to in that, right? So everything's virtual. You, you could be a lot more efficient with your time, actually, and, and spend a lot more time with kids uh, over video calls. And that's really the way we had to do it. Um, the negative was you didn't have that personal interaction like you normally would. I think we do as good a job as anybody of getting into kids' homes and really being able to have that personal one-on-one attention and interaction. And so I really did miss that part. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword there where, yes, we didn't have to travel as much. We probably didn't have to spend as much money. But uh, at the same token, it was limited in terms of your in-person contact. And so we had to try to maximize that the best way we could. Do you see, I know you're limited in the scholarships, do you see a group of kids uh, coming in as well, maybe as as maybe preferred walk-ons or, or kids that normally would be on your scope that the scholarships weren't available. Do you see that kind of matriculating to where you'll have a group of kids probably join the team in the fall as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, to go along with it, we're still recruiting in terms of the class, right. and there will definitely be some – Uh, walk-on opportunities and roster spot opportunities that we're going to have to fill. And, uh, of course, with us playing a season this spring, it'll be interesting to see what the shakeout of that looks like. You know, maybe some injuries, maybe some liabilities in terms of, you know, just how guys shake out. But um, we're going to still need to recruit some guys to be on the roster for the fall for sure. I want to give you a chance to talk about a couple things. Uh, Maybe not 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 recruiting uh, per se, but – you added a couple new coaches in January. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about their progress and how they're fitting in with the team and, and how, what they're bringing to the table for you so far. This spring. Yeah, it's it's been very odd that we are in February and we've gone through basically what we'd call like a fall camp typically. And uh, we've been through the coaches. The coaches have been through basically like a spring ball. Well, COVID put a damper on all that in the fall. So we've been through a lot with our coaching staff and now, you know, being in this intense period of getting ready for a season again. And so been able to really see a lot out of them in terms of what they're going to bring to the table. And it's been great. I mean, they have bought in and really been on board with everything that we stand for. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of just how the staff has come together and worked together. A big part of what we're talking about as a program, and this this relates to the coaches and the players, is just our team togetherness and our and our program identity of it's it's a we us and our thing. It's it's not an individualized thing, and so uh, all of our coaches have really bought into that and have tried to lead the charge on that. So I'm very proud of them. A lot of new things for you, and then and we'll wrap up with this question. A lot of new things for you this year. I mean, not only with just COVID, but first year in the Mountain East Conference. It's going to start in March. Uh, then you're going to get a few months off, and then you're really going to be in officially your first year of the Mountain East Conference to mm-hmm. where you, you'll have you'll be able to battle for postseason. What is sort of, uh, with March coming up, what's your transition? I mean, what, what, what are you looking forward to? What's your schedule like in the transition to where you're going to cut this season off and then automatically get ready for a new one to start? Yeah, it's a great question. I've never been in this position, so I'm not sure how to answer that. But uh, I think – 
basically we've got to get through this spring to see where we're at and uh I think, you know, we're going to have a few months to breathe a little bit. I mean, obviously, we're going to need to uh, button up anything from the springtime that we need to address in terms of personnel, uh, any type of, you know, what we've went through from the five-game regular season schedule. Uh, you know, it'll give us a great barometer to be able to take into the fall with us once we have a full game schedule roll out in the fall season. And so, um, you know, there'll be a couple months there that we'll need to – you know, kind of get ready, but then, like you say, we're going to have to prepare for another fall season. Uh, the great thing about that is uh, you're going from one fall in the spring season to another fall in the fall season, so you can kind of do it back to back, and you're kind of in the mode to do that. So uh, I feel really good about where we're at right now, and then uh, come May and June and July, we'll just kind of treat it like a normal preparation in terms of getting ready for August and see where that takes us. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Todd.